Hey, welcome back for another episode of EV Morning. Need I say it at this stage, you grab yourself a brew and settle in for the news as we head all around the world hunting down the most interesting EV stories. Welcome to the channel. My name is Martin Lee, and if you like what we do here, hit subscribe and the bell icon so you never miss a show. We're always keeping an eye out for Rimat stories these days. I'm hugely excited by not only the Navara Hypercar, but also their new partnership with Bugatti. Now, with around 2,000 horsepower, you'll have no problems getting through the battery pack of their Navara, but what about when you finally want to charge it back up again? Well, Marty Rimatz has hooked up an Avera to an Ionity high-powered charger, and the images he shared online I think are incredible. We've all been impressed by the likes of Teslas on the V3 superchargers, Porsche Taycans, Audi e-tron GTs charging up, Ionic 5s even, pulling between 250, 270 kilowatts or so. Then Lucid came along and tipped the 300 kilowatt mark. Now, we have a new charging king. The Navera was shown hitting 333 kilowatts, but it gets even better as Mate's tweet claimed that the car could in fact charge over 500 kilowatts. Well, the Ionity unit they were using could only dish out 350, so now we're waiting for the chargers to catch up with the cars. I love pushing the boundaries. I thought this next story was just great when I saw it. As much as I love something like, like a Model S Plaid, and I really would like one, by the way, if anyone wants to send one my way, it's great to see more and more EVs with just two wheels. And this story brings us to Africa, which we don't talk about too much on the news show here. Opibus are an African-Swedish electric motorbike manufacturer. They've teamed up with Uber in Africa to supply 3,000 ride-sharing electric motorbikes. Although Uber's become hugely popular through cars in the US, Africa is seeing a huge demand for motorbikes that will better suit their road infrastructure and, of course, going electric. The bikes will have dual battery packs that can be replaced. It'll help the bikes run for much longer, as drivers can easily drop in a fully charged pack for a few more hours of work or commuting. Next, the Stellantis brands Citroën, Peugeot and Opel are only going to be making electric MPVs in Europe from this year. Right now, it's more good news for the European market, as manufacturers are concentrating their efforts on the electric revolution. So what are the models affected? Well, models like the Rifter, the Bolingo, Combi and Zafira Life only being sold in their electric form as early as this year. There's still going to be the combustion versions available outside of the EU, however. It's going to be a busy time for those brands. Opel will be offering every one of their vehicles with at least some form of electrification. Although, you know, I do get worried when I hear electrified because hopefully it does mean that they at least put a plug socket on the side of them. There have been many reports of dealers adding huge markups to the price of the Ford F-150 Lightning as demand massively outstrips supply in the US. And now it looks like Ford might be able to do a little something to find a home for every Lightning that they could produce over the next couple of years. Dealers are taking advantage of the shortage in supply, but Ford are pushing back. Now, technically, Ford can't dictate the price at which their dealers sell the all-electric pickup truck, or indeed any vehicle. But they certainly have a lot of sway over the dealers. I mean, for instance, they are the ones that supply the dealers with the product. Well, Ford are seeking to protect their own brand, and they're putting pressure on to make sure that customers of the truck don't get ripped off. A sternly worded letter was issued to dealers recently, warning them that they could even have their allocation of F-150 Lightnings redirected elsewhere. Well, the F-150 Lightnings had a huge reaction from the buying public. It's a big promise as well, and it'll go a long way to converting many people to driving electric, perhaps even some truck driving doubters before now. Let's hope it doesn't turn sour for potential buyers before any vehicles are even in their driveways. Tesla's price for full self-driving has indeed had been hiked again, as promised, via his Twitter account. It was $10,000, and it's now $12,000. Not the first time the full self-driving has had a price rise, with the early versions costing even less than $5,000. It's unlikely to be the last increase, as Tesla continually improves its technology with updates, and Elon Musk saying publicly he thinks they should be charging a lot more. 
The latest price rise might coincide with another update, and we can expect the subscription model to rise in line. So the outright purchase price makes economic sense for lots of people. Now, as of recording this, the purchase price has gone up by $2,000, but the monthly subscription price hasn't. It'll be interesting to see how this all plays out in the sales figures. I really wonder, anyone who has had their heart set on buying that, full self-driving package. Will the extra $2,000 really put them off or will they stump up for it? Or will it push more people onto the monthly subscription package? Which, if you have your Tesla over a period of time where you have many Teslas and you are always paying the monthly subscription, potentially worth a lot more money to the company to get you hooked in. Mercedes-Benz are next in the news, showing off their concept car recently. In case you missed it, it was the EQXX, and I was blown away by the claimed range of a thousand kilometers, not by stuffing in the world's biggest battery, but working on efficiency. They say an efficiency of six miles per kilowatt hour. Now, at first glance, its shape maybe threw me a little bit, a gigantic overhang of the rear dominated by the silhouette of the car, but it has grown on me over time. There's hints of the Kia EV6 around the front end and the side profile reminds me of the Lightyear One. I would say heavily inspired by the Lightyear One. There doesn't seem to be any active cooling. Mercedes-Benz claiming the car is so efficient and also not built for high performance. So you're never gonna pull a ton of juice from the battery that generates heat. But the battery won't heat up enough to warrant extra complexity and weight that comes with installing an active liquid cooling system. Let's see how that works out when you are rapid charging though. Anyway, that's enough from me today. Hope you enjoyed the show. I love scouring the news from all around the world to come up with some little nuggets of EV stories for this channel. Do you think that Mercedes-Benz will come good on their 1,000 kilometer claim? Do we even need EVs that go that far? Or is it good to push the boundaries of efficiency because it means that they can end up putting a smaller battery pack in that for everyday use, the kind of journeys that you and I would do all the time? What about Tesla raising the price of their full self-driving package again? Is it worth it? Was it even worth it? $5,000. Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what we do here, give us a thumbs up. It tells us to make more videos like this, and I'll see you on the next one.